goodness. I can let my God down. Because even He had issues. I bring, gain great encouragement that He too struggled. He had something that He couldn't shake. Something that He'd been to every prayer meeting, even when the church didn't have prayer meetings, He turned up. Even when the pastor said we're praying and fasting, guess what? He went further and did an extra fast. He did everything he possibly could in his own strength. He cried out, he cried out, he cried out. And guess what? The issue still hung around. Even for someone so godly, that God used so greatly, he had issues. He had things that God was doing on the inside. And he needed to deal with on the inside of him. Some of you have come here today and you have things that you haven't been able to shake. You've gone to the prayer meetings. You've done everything you can. And you've even come today and almost disqualified yourself. Some of you have thought you passed your use by date. Maybe I'll sit on the sidelines. I'll let someone else do it because, you know, I've done something I shouldn't have done. I love Paul in 2 Corinthians 12, verse 8 to 10. Listen to this. He says three times, Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been there where you've cried out to God? God, take this away from me. I need your help. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. You know what? God has an ability to use people who are very weak who have lots of stuff going on, and even in your brokenness. Not only does God love you, but God uses you. You don't have to sit out and think I'm disqualified. I, I, can't, I can't keep doing this. God's power and His grace is made perfect in your weakness. Not only Paul's weakness, your weakness today. And it says, therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses. So don't hide them away. It's okay to say that you're not, you don't have it all together. He says, I'll boast more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That it is why for Christ's sake I delight in my weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, and in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Friends, never rely on yourself. Always come back to the foot of the cross and say, God, your grace to forgive me. God, I need your love to fill me. God, I cannot do it on my own. I need you in my life today. See, we often say, come as you are in church. Come, come, come. But the story of grace is that he loves you way, 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 way too much to leave you there. <coughs> come as you are a hundred percent. A hundred. Come with all your baggage, all your problems and all your issues. But when you come to Jesus, what He does in your life is He doesn't leave you where you are. He moves you on. He moves you forward. He's changing you. He's breaking you away from sin. He's getting you back up off your feet and taking you forward. His grace will carry you. And His grace will cover you. Hey, I want to invite one of my friends up. Is he here? John, give him a big, big hand. He got a good back of it. Hey, I just want to show you a quick quick illustration just before I pray for you. And uh, you can stand over there, John. Give him a proper hand. Give him a really big... See, as I said before, I have uh, two kids and they're little, so I can still like play catch and games with them. And uh, I take them down to the park sometimes. And I, I love sports, so I'm in, they're in strict training to be the world's best athletes. And um, not really, but I, I like to play catch with them. And what I do, this is my son here, he's taller than me and bigger than me, but let's pretend he's my son. And um, he's standing over there, and I'll say this, I'll say, Jackson or Ruby, we're going to play catch. And because your dad is an athlete, and you're in strict training, you better catch this. Already, if you're going to do it, I know you can do it, I, I bet you got it. And uh, so I count them down, three, two, one, and then I throw them the ball. Three. You got it. You ready? Okay. Oh, three, two, one. Oh, goodness, what are you doing? 
You know what would happen? I'm just an average dad. I'm not even an amazing dad. But even an average dad like me would do this. If my son dropped the ball, the worst thing I could do would be to run up to him and say, that's it, we're going home. Pick up the ball, you dropped it. What are you thinking? How dare you drop the ball? See, even as an average dad, you don't do that. That's crazy talk. You do this. You say, you know what, Jackson? That's okay. Oh, good. Oh, good. This is what I do. I said, that's cool. I'll come closer. So try this time, right? Ready to catch it? Three, two, one. At every region! Yes! Hey, give him a big, big hand. Hey, I gotta tell you something. Some of you have dropped the ball. Some of you, heaven forbid, have made a mistake. And this is what you thought God did, your heavenly Father. You thought He took some steps away from you when you dropped the ball. But the truth is, He didn't take any steps away from you. He's a good Father. He's a good Dad. And He said, that's okay. I'm going to take a step towards you. Because my Bible says that He is close to the brokenhearted. He is a lover of your soul. He is your Father who is better than you could ever ask, think, or imagine. He has a plan and a purpose for your life. And even when you drop the ball in your relationship, and you drop the ball in an area of your life, you thought God took a few steps away from you. Friends, no, that wasn't God. He took a step towards you. He's not running from you in your shame. He runs towards you. He doesn't push you down like many of us Christians might do, but He lifts you up and puts you back on your feet and says, I love you, I love you, I love you. You are a child of the Most High. You have a good, good Father who's not ashamed of you. He doesn't push you away, friends. He picks you back up. And friends, He doesn't dig up your past. Dash. He doesn't dig up your past. The failures. He sets prisoners free. He releases prisoners and sets captives free. And he wants you to know one thing. He wants to ask you a question today. Do you love me now? Not the mistake you made last year, last night, but do you love me now? That's the most important question to Jesus. Not to pull you down, pull you apart, but to restore you, to put you back together. Hey, at every region, can you stand to your feet, put your things down? I want to pray for you just for a moment. And I believe God has been speaking into your heart wherever you are, whatever you're going through. And He loves you so much today, I don't think it's by chance or by accident you are here. You might think someone dragged me along, told me they'd pay for my lunch if they came to church. Friends, it's not by coincidence. God has a plan for your life. He hasn't missed any detail. He hasn't missed anything that you've gone through or that you've done. He sees everything and even despite all of our junk, He still loves us. So just while at every region, we have every head out, every eye closed, I'd love to pray for you. To people who maybe you've never accepted Jesus into your life. You've never asked Jesus to come in. You've, you've heard about him. You've checked out church. You've watched stuff on YouTube. You've read a book. Someone told you about something, but you've never accepted Jesus into your life for the first time. And I'm going to tell you something. It's the most simple, most easy decision we could ever make. Some of us have complicated it. You think, man, I don't know anything about the Bible. You know, I'm not even sure what, what it's all about. But all you have to do is this. All you have to do is say yes to Jesus. 
is call out to Him. The Bible says if you call upon the name of the Lord, what does that mean? All you have to do is this. In our day, in our age, is yell out, help God. Help. And guess what? God will come into your situation. And you might not feel anything straight away, but I promise you, God will come in as He knocks on the door of your heart. If you just open the door, He will come into your life. He can restore you. He can forgive you. You've tried it in your own strength and you haven't been able to do it. Let's turn to Jesus today. Say, God, I need your grace to come into my life. I've tried running in all different ways. I've made so many mistakes. Today, I want you to wash me clean. I want you to set me apart. And friends, if it's for the very first time, it will be my honor, right where you're seated, whatever region you're at, I'm going to pray for you right where you are. I won't embarrass anyone. I won't do anything strange. Simply, I'm just going to pray a prayer. And if you're going to say, hey, Jesse, include me in this prayer, all you need to do, I'm going to count to three. You just have to put your hand up and then you can put it straight down again. And if I'm going to see your hand, I'm going to know who I'm praying for, and you're going to invite Jesus into your life. But maybe today, I know that in all locations, there's people who have come into the room, who have made a decision for God, but you know that you know that you know right now you're not where you should be. And God has a way of bringing you home, restoring you again as you recommit your heart. Friends, never get tired of committing your heart afresh to Him. So right now, every head bowed, every eye closed. The reason in church we do that sometimes is simply for privacy. So that you can not think about your friend or your spouse or someone in front or behind, but simply you can think about your own heart in your own life. I'm going to count to three. And if you would say, Jesse, would you please include me in this prayer? It would be my greatest privilege, my greatest honor to pray for you wherever you are today. So if that's you, three, one, God loves you so much. Two, His grace can cover anything in your life. Three, right now, at every location, just put your hand up, put it straight down again. If you're saying, Jesse, would you pray for me today? Include me in this prayer, maybe for the very first time, or you need to recommit your life to Him quickly. Just put it up, and you can put it down again while every eye is closed. Thank you. Over here, is there anyone else that would say yes to Jesus today? Wants to accept Jesus into their life for the first time? Or maybe you know, if I'm honest with God and honest with myself, I need to reconnect. That should just quickly before we go. Put your hand. Now you can see Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm just going to wait 10 more seconds. If that's you, don't leave this room today without responding to Jesus. He loves you too much. Young person, older person, Reconnect to Him today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Quickly, just shoot it up. Put it down again. Thank you so much. Right in the middle. You're worth waiting for. So, so good. Anyone else here today? At any location? Just lift it up and put it down. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, we're all going to pray this prayer together. And church, I want you to pray it like you mean it. I want you to pray it with all your heart and all your passion. But if you put your hand up and you haven't prayed this prayer before, you can pray it right now. But guess what? Even if you are too shy, and I've been there, I've come into church where I've done this one. And no one saw it, but I know that I know that I know I wanted to pray that prayer. Guess what? You haven't missed out. You can pray this prayer after me right now. So let's pray this prayer. Come on, let's close our eyes. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you so much for your love, for your grace. Thank you for forgiving me and giving me a new start. From today, I choose you to be my Lord and Savior. Come into my heart, wash me clean, and let me follow you all the days of my life in Jesus mighty name come on let's give Jesus a big